everybody, and welcome back to a brand new video. I do hope you're all well. Let me know how you're doing in the comments down below. Now, today, I'm gonna to be doing a little sit-down video. I haven't done a video like this in what seems like forever. I've been so busy with exams. I've had exams, basically. I've had exams for the previous two weeks. I had three exams. You've probably seen my exam vlog. If not, I'll leave it on the screen here. And I basically documented my exams on there. I had three of them. This week, I've got nothing because I start semester two on Monday. So probably at the weekend, I'll start thinking about semester two. I've also just realized my computer's on behind, so just give me a minute. Okay, my computer's got a spinning wheel, so... Um, We'll just wait to see what that's doing. Yes, I had exams and now I'm just chilling. And I asked you over on my Instagram, I think it was a month ago, I think it was the 5th of January, to send in some kind of questions or some topics that you wanted a little bit of advice on because I thought I would share my advice. I'm gonna leave everything in the description down below. So if you want to jump to a certain section, I've just realized my pajama top is leaking through my jumper. If you want to jump to a certain section, then you can do in case you don't wanna watch the whole of the video or in case you don't want advice on some certain things. Let me see if my computer's working now. Um, it's doing something. It will arrive with a clock on. Hey, there we go. Right, let's jump in to the advice. The first one said, I'm in year 12 and surprisingly maths is my fave. Only thing I've found tricky is remembering content after a few weeks. Any advice on keeping older stuff fresh in your memory? What I would say to this is always go back to things that you're forgetting. And what you want to do is you want to revisit those topics on kind of like a regular basis. So maybe start with the topics that you find the easiest and then get those out of the way and then really have time to focus on the harder topics. But also while you're focusing on the harder topics, you've got to come back to the easier topics so you don't forget them. So kind of mix your topics in and let's say you do something at the start of the month, then make sure you maybe review it a week later or at the end of the month so that you don't forget something. Or what you could do is you could do all the harder stuff first so you get the hard stuff out of the way and then it, the easier stuff seems easier because you've got the harder stuff out of the way and then come back to the harder stuff and keep revising that. But the key to kind of not forgetting stuff is learning it well and applying it to past papers and things like that so that the knowledge you learn, you're actively using that knowledge in a real life situation or in an exam situation so that you can apply that knowledge and not forget it. And thirdly, make sure you come back to your knowledge. It's called active recall. Maybe revise a little bit of the subject or a little bit of the topic, then move on to something else and then come back to that topic and build on it. So you don't have to revise it all in one go and then keep refreshing it. You can kind of build on it as the weeks go on. Coping with lockdown and setting manageable time tasks. I think this is really important because for me anyway at the minute I am not really setting tasks in the day and that's because I like to have a balance. I've had two weeks of busy revision and busy exams so I'm just chilling at the minute. When you are on the go setting tasks is really really helpful. I quite like to do this mentally or goals I like to do mentally and I just think as I get up in the day right I'm gonna have this done by the end of today and then it kind of feels like you've got some kind of purpose around the house and then as I'm doing things in the day I can tick things off in my head sometimes I write it down I like to have a to-do list some days I really use to-do lists for a vision I don't really use it for like my day-to-day -day life because to be honest I'm not doing that much at the minute sometimes I might wake up and think right I want to film a video today and I just have that in the back of my head if I get everything out of the way and I've got some free time then I get it done sometimes I might think I want to edit a video and I do the same thing can I get that done today and if not then I don't put too much pressure on myself because it is a difficult time it's nice to take some time out for yourself but little tasks here and there are really really helpful to kind of get you through the day get you motivated and coping with lockdown you know keep yourself busy have little things that you do in the day and setting tasks can obviously help with that. If you've not got much to do and you're trying to find things, then baking is really, really good. Doing a little bit of fun research if you want to, or learning something that you are just learning for the fun of it. I've started watching a series on Netflix, if you've got Netflix or something like that. Even if you don't feel productive doing it, it's still productive for you because it's gonna help you get through this lockdown. So yeah, that's what I would advise for setting manageable tasks and coping with lockdown. Motivation slash tips for online use. 
uni. Because I share things like this online and I have a uni YouTube channel and I share my uni experience, I'm still also trying to find motivation for online uni as well. Just because I share it online doesn't mean I'm always motivated. And I went through, I think it was about, I mean, we had 11 weeks of uni in semester one and probably about week seven or eight. I kind of thought, oof, I got in this like little slump. It was a little bit hard for me to get up and do uni work. And I think I've shared this in a couple of videos. What you've got to remember is like the reason you're doing this uni degree. Because I was in the house for like eight weeks, I was thinking, oh, you know, you kind of don't feel like there's gonna be an end in sight and you're always gonna be online, which yes, we might be online for quite a while, but you know, we are gonna be able to go into uni as soon as everything's okay. And yes, that might be a while, but it is gonna happen. So have that in the back of your mind. Also think, what is your goal? Why are you doing the degree that you want to do? What are you planning on doing? And have that little goal. Maybe it's a goal that's really, really far away, or it might be the goal for the end of the day or something. Find that, and then that should give you some motivation. Also treat yourself as well. Because I'm at home, I like to give myself little treats. If I do, I sound like a dog. <laughs> if I do my revision, or if I do something, I'll I'll go downstairs, I'll get some sweets or something. I love sweets and chocolates, anything like that. Crisps, I'll have them. When I was doing my exams, if you watch my vlog, I went on about three egg, three walks, and I went on more, but just didn't film them. And it was really nice to get out of the house. It gives you some time to get some fresh air, and hopefully then you'll feel a little bit more motivated. Make a guinea pig video. I, they have featured in my vlog, they featured in my vlog, or my exam vlog, so if you want to see guinea pigs, then head over to my vlogs. In terms of exams being cancelled, I know we've kind of had a month now since they've been cancelled, and it's a bummer, really. It's quite annoying because I can't believe my exams got cancelled when I was doing my A-levels, and now this year's exams have been cancelled as well. I would say continue working. Don't put too much pressure on yourself because we know the exams aren't going ahead as they normally would be. You're gonna get assessed in a different way. I would keep working so that you've got the evidence that you are at the grade that you are at. But yeah, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Make sure you have some time for you. Make sure you've got that good balance and uh, keep going because it will be worth it. You will get the grades that you deserve. I would hope this year the exam results get given out a bit better than the previous year because it was a bit of a shambles last year. So hopefully everybody involved in that has learnt, that's fingers crossed, and you will have a bit of a smoother results day than my year did. What's the best way to revise since exams will be online at home? I would definitely take into consideration all the things that I've mentioned. I would make sure you actually understand the topics, and I know that sounds quite generic, but because things are online, I found myself kind of slightly falling in the trap of thinking, I kind of understand this, but I'm gonna move on because I've got everything online and I can, you know, have my books out with me. Which, yes, in the case of it being online is true, but what you need to be careful of is that you're not just kind of reading material and not revising it as well as you usually would because it's online. I would definitely understand it as much as you can. Um, be careful not just to rely on your books because in the exam, of course, you've got a time limit, you've got certain questions, you're not gonna be able to find that question online maybe, or you're not gonna be able to find that topic in your book so definitely make sure you understand everything hopefully you know you are using your lecturers you're using your teachers because they are still there even though you can't access them as easily as usual make sure you contact them if you don't understand something it's so important to say things can really easily slip and everything moves on quite fast your teacher doesn't see you in real life so you've probably got your camera off I know I don't put my camera on oops but your teacher doesn't see like your reactions to what they're saying and they can't really judge that you don't understand something. So it's on you to definitely make sure you understand it. And in terms of revision in general and revision tips, I've got tons and tons of videos on my channel. So do check them out for generic revision tips. Ideas for distressing slash relaxing as a student. I find it hard to sit there and do nothing. I would probably say what I've said in this video. Go for a walk, watch something, make sure you completely disconnect from what you've been doing in the day. What I've personally done is started watching the Stranger Things 
no, not these strange things, strange things on Netflix. I really, really enjoy it and I've actually got through two seasons in two weeks, which if anyone knows, that's very, very good for me. I am uh, on season three, I'm about halfway through, episode four, I think I'm on, maybe three, and I'm really enjoying it. So definitely do something that's completely different to what you do during the day. There's loads of videos online for little exercises and workouts that you might want to do if you don't want to just sit there and watch something. I have got a little bit into dancing. Uh, if you've seen my Instagram, you've probably seen me doing a little bit of jive, a bit of cha-cha, a little bit of salsa, and Shirley Ballas from Strictly has got me into those. Maybe take up something new, do a bit of baking, do something that you've never done before, stimulate your brain, get your brain going in a different way to just revising and learning. And that way, hopefully, you can kind of de-stress and enjoy the relaxing as well. Opinions on taking two gap years. Um, I've never thought about gap years, to be honest. I'm not really the person to ask about gap years because like I said, I've never thought about it. I've never done one myself. I'm gonna answer this on what I would do. It's kind of half and half. I don't think I would because of what's happening and I don't know what it's gonna be like in a year, but then again, I would take a gap year because I don't know what it's gonna be like in a year. And if everything's okay in a year, then maybe that gap year would have been a good idea because you can start or you can continue university as normal. But also if you do take a gap year, you've kind of got to think, is it gonna be worth it in terms of what I'm gonna be able to do in the gap year? to know. And taking two gap years, I don't know anybody that has done two in a row. I would guess you have to plan out what you're going to do in that two years. You can't just take a gap year and not think about it. I think gap years are really useful for when you go in traveling and with COVID, it's probably really hard to do that because we can't travel anywhere. Unless you're an influencer in Dubai, then you can travel there for some strange reason, but that's a different story. Two gap years in a row, in terms of COVID time, probably wouldn't be very good because we can't go anywhere. But gap years in general, I think if it works for you, if you have a plan and if you wanna do something with your gap year, then, you know, go and do it. What do you do when you feel like you're stuck on a problem? This is a good question. So what I like to do, let me take you through what I usually do. It kind of depends on what the problem I'm doing and how long I've been stuck on the problem. Before I get stuck, I always talk out loud. I like to kind of teach myself in a way. I speak to myself out loud. That way, my brain kind of processes the information much better. If I get stuck, behind you, I have a big whiteboard and I like to get up and write the question out and have a go at it there. And just that change of location and, you know, sitting up from the desk and kind of speaking out loud as well really, really helps. If you don't have a whiteboard, then grab a spare piece of paper and do it on there. Then, if I can't do it then, I, you know, I'll put my hands up and I'll say, I do search for the answer. Not always, because the answer might not be available and um, you know, it might be an exam or something, but if the answer is available, then I'll look for the answer. And the reason I do that is because it helps me with the method. Bigger questions in maths aren't always about the answer. It's about how you get there. But if I can't find the answer, or if I just can't do the problem without the answer, then, and I've tried all that, then what I'll do is I'll take a break and I'll think, right, okay, move on to something else and come back to it. If that doesn't work, then I'll come back to it the next day. And sometimes I might give up and, you know, wait for my lecturer to go through it or something. But the majority of the time, I do like to try and do it myself. Even if I don't get an answer, I'll just write down what I know or what I, you know, think I can start the question with. And that way, at least I have something rather than nothing. There we go. That is all I've got for today. Hopefully that helped. If you've watched this whole video, then thank you very, very much because I really do appreciate it. You can always message me over on Instagram, which is down there. I try to respond to as many messages as I can. Hopefully you did enjoy. Give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you very, very soon with a brand new video. Bye. And with COVID, it's probably really hard to do that because we can't travel anywhere. Unless you're an influencer in Dubai, then you can travel there for some strange reason, but that's a different story.